on December 7th of 2019 on the Historical Pictures Facebook page. This post appeared briefly before being quickly and quietly deleted. It read, On the last night of filming Titanic, someone laced the cast and crew's food. 80 cast and crew members, including James Cameron and Bill Paxton, started hallucinating and had to be hospitalized. Now I suspect this post was deleted because it shows both Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio sitting idly, Winslet with her eyes closed, which puts the idea in the reader's head that they were both directly affected by this, which isn't true. They were never hospitalized for a food related incident on the set of Titanic. At at least one point, Kate Winslet required medical treatment, but for other reasons, not that. The post in question, it's inaccurate, a half truth. There was no suspected spiking of food on the last night of filming. I mean, there was a similar incident which happened three weeks into filming without the two lead actors present. This incident did affect around 80 members of the cast and crew, including both Bill Paxton and a still furious James Cameron. Please leave a like, this is YouTube, I need it. It was August of 1996, the final night of shooting in Nova Scotia before the production would shift to Mexico. These shoots pertained to the scenes set in the modern day. You know, the ones with the salvage crew and 87 year old Gloria Stewart who plays the 100 year old Rose Dawson. The nature of the shoot meant a lot had to be done at night. So they'd start filming at dusk and continue right through to dawn. And so midnight acted as a lunch break. So on this particular night, everybody in unison descended on the catering spread. A spared no expense affair considering the budget of the film, which ballooned to $200 million. And this impressive feast's main centerpiece was a huge batch of clam chowder. Though the nature of the chowder has since been disputed, James Cameron has gone on record as saying it was muscle, whilst an official Halifax police report mentions it as being lobster. It's unknown who was right or wrong about this, and also it's largely irrelevant. All you need to know is that it was reportedly delicious. So much so that people kept returning for seconds. Marilyn McAvoy, who was present as an artist standby painter at the time, only ended up eating one bowl but not by choice. She noted in a 2017 Vice interview that everyone found the chowder so delicious that people returned two or three times, which in hindsight was a horrible mistake. Luckily for her though, by the time she went back for more, it was all gone. Bill Paxton also partook. RIP, what a legend. Not RIP because of what happened, that's unrelated. But yeah, RIP, what a legend. But him eating the food on set was a rare occurrence. He was one of the only people who didn't care for these local caterers and normally opted to order in his own food. This night, however, he found himself caught in a conversation with director James Cameron and the two decided to eat together. After night lunch, everyone returned to their various roles, including the actors who went back to their trailers to await the call to action. And for half an hour, everything seemed fine. That's when things started to take a turn. A sense of confusion began to descend over the set. There was a fuzziness to everything and people seemed to be having trouble focusing on their jobs. It also seemed like the natural thing for people to do under these bizarre new circumstances was to leave the set and relocate outside. Some people reported feeling a mix of being both drunk and high on marijuana. Others began laughing hysterically. Some were crying hysterically and some began throwing up. James Cameron's PA reported feeling toxic and beside themselves. James Cameron returned to set and found nobody. He was quoted as saying, I'm standing at the monitors near the camera and the room is empty. It was like the twilight zone. That's when a feeling of sickness and anxiousness swept over him. And he began to think that he had ingested a paralytic shellfish neurotoxin. Perhaps it was in the chowder, he thought. Perhaps it was in something else. But if true, this was an incredibly dangerous situation to be in. So he quickly stepped away to make himself vomit, which was a good thing in the long term as it helped lessen the effects of whatever he was experiencing. Actor Louis Abernathy recalls how James Cameron appeared when he returned. I was just shocked at the way he looked. One eye was completely red, like the Terminator eye. A pupil, no iris, beat red. The other eye looked like he'd been sniffing glue since he was four. Bill Paxton heard somewhat of a commotion from outside his trailer and opened the door to find multiple ambulances pulling up and absolute chaos. An unnamed assistant director ran up to a confused Paxton and asked if he was feeling okay. Yeah, he said, I feel all right, what's going on? He was asked if he ate the chowder, to which he responded, yeah, I, I ate a couple of bowls, why? And it's at this moment that he began to feel a little bit off. And then a panic began to set in, like he needed to breathe into a paper bag as he looked over a sea of people just having a real bad time of it. Or a good time of it. It largely depended person to person. So Paxton and Cameron and the 80 or so odd people seemingly affected were taken to the emergency room of a local hospital via ambulance and any drivers who appeared unaffected. 
Dartmouth General was absolutely not equipped for something like this on its best day, let alone at 1am in the morning. Initially, everybody was put into cubicles with curtains around them. This would help isolate the rising insanity. But people did not like staying put. Aside from the laughing and the crying and the euphoria and the anxiety, a lot of people were feeling an almost boundless energy. Some crew members wandered about, collapsing on gurneys and tables, whilst others used wheelchairs to race up and down corridors. And it was even reported by multiple people that a conga line had formed. Also, James Cameron was stabbed by another crew member in the face with a pen, which left him both bleeding profusely and laughing hysterically. At this time, the hospital staff were under the assumption that, yes, this seems like food poisoning. So the worst affected people were made to ingest liquid charcoal, also known as activated charcoal. When ingested, it binds to any toxins present in the stomach to prevent the body from further absorption. And then that person vomits violently. A very unpleasant but effective treatment that James Cameron referred to as a box of vile crap. Bill Paxton observing the carnage around him and realising the time it would take for the overworked and no doubt underpaid hospital staff to get to him decided his time would be better spent elsewhere. Well, I said to Jim, I said, Jim, I'm, I'm not going to hang out here. This is bedlam. I'm going to go, I'm going to wander because it was only a few blocks from the set. I'm going to wander back down and just drink a case of beer. <laughs> Which is what I did. Uh, that, seemed to, that seemed to help me. And by sunup, everyone else was feeling better, coming down or up from whatever high or low that they were on. And a bunch of people started to play hacky sack at the hospital, just waiting to be given the all clear to vacate. When this happened, everyone was sent home to rest to then return to work the following night to finish the shoot. Presumably, most people bought their own night lunches. But what in God's name just happened? Was it even the chowder? And was it even the food poisoning? Well, yes, it was the chowder. And no, it was not the food poisoning. Something much more sinister had occurred. A police toxicology report was requested that day to determine what the Swiss had just happened. And lo and behold, a significant amount of fencyclidine, PCP, was found in the chowder. An illicit and mind-altering substance sometimes referred to as angel dust. And being an illegally produced drug, this means that the conditions it's made and the result of every batch is often vastly different. And depending how much you consume, it's commonly known to cause hallucinations, distorted perceptions of sound, violent behavior, and suicidal impulses. It was initially developed as an anesthetic in 1956, but by 1965, it was disallowed in the US due to its extreme adverse side effects. It was, however, used for similar purposes on animals until 1978 when it was again deemed too dangerous to animals, again due to the side effects. A lot of people involved in the incident were obviously furious at this revelation. And rightly so. Somebody could have easily been seriously injured, either mentally or physically, or perhaps even killed. Bill Paxton and James Cameron, when speaking to the press, were angered at the carnage that could have very easily occurred. Mentioning that the 87-year-old Gloria Stewart, who was present, could have, but luckily didn't ingest any of the chowder. An eight-year-old girl on set, unfortunately, wasn't so lucky. She was reported to be crying hysterically and had to be held down to prevent inflicting self-harm. God damn, if you are that person, I hope you're okay. Good grief. So, you know, the question remained, who did it and why? Now, James Cameron is notorious for brutal working conditions on his film sets. We talked about that recently on our Caravan of Garbage video covering The Abyss from 1989. What a flippin' nightmare that was. I'm James Cameron. Was this incident on the set of Titanic a form of revenge by a disgruntled member of the cast or crew? Cameron has since joked that perhaps it was his now wife, Susie Amis, one of the handful of people who wasn't interested in the chowder that night. She's always been high on my list of suspects as a result, he said. A more likely culprit was a person or persons involved with UNAD Quality Foods LTD, the catering company that served the chowder. This is something that then-CEO Earl Scott adamantly denied. It was the Hollywood crowd bringing in their psychedelic shit, he told Entertainment Weekly. I don't think it was purposely done to hurt somebody. It was done like a party thing that got carried away. There was, however, another still nameless person that remains suspect numero uno. James Cameron has since commented on a disgruntled and unnamed crew member he had fired the day before for creating some kind of trouble with the caterers. He said, We believe the poisoning was this idiot's plan to get back at the caterers whom of which we promptly fired the next day. So it worked. Hollywood insiders, though, which could basically mean anybody who says they're a Hollywood insider, so, you know, take this with a grain of salt. They've suggested that the attack was specifically targeted at James Cameron himself due to his perceived tyrannical behaviour. And if that is the case, it is possible that this incident 
had some sort of an impact on the director. Cameron has admitted himself that since this incident, but not strictly as a direct result of this, I would say, he has mallowed over time and regrets not having listened more to those around him and that he'd been less autocratic. He says now that he only blows up a couple of times a year at people, as opposed to every few days, and aspires to try and be his inner Ron Howard, who by all accounts is the nicest man in Hollywood. No one's ever tried to poison Ron Howard, I tell you that much. Not yet. The Halifax Police Department investigated the matter for over two years, even going so far as to executing a warrant for the Department of Health Records and getting a list of every single person who worked on the set. This ultimately resulted in nothing, and the case was officially closed due to lack of suspects on February 12th, 1999, year of the Matrix and the movie End of Days. Two equally good movies. So it's a mystery. A Hollywood mystery. But what's not a mystery is that you can actually see videos like this early at bigsandwich.co, where there's also exclusive podcasts, movie commentaries, and thousands of hours of other stuff quietly tucked behind our own little private Patreon for anybody to enjoy. Or maybe check out our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows every single Monday. Of course, we will be covering Avatar 2. Look at all this goddamn water. Thanks for watching, though, and goodbye forever. I mean, it's goodbye forever if you decide to never come back. I'm, I'm going to be here doing this for a while. Yeah.